Dude, why would anybody want to make cannabis a Schedule 3 and keep enforcement? Any ideas? Any ideas who that might be, dude? Hmm, kind of heavy, a little early, but I'm going to guess uh, money, man. Everything goes to money in my mind when we're just playing around with Schedule 3 instead of full decriminalization. People want to get in on it. I mean, I can tell you who can... Uh, Banner, good morning, sir. Good morning. I bet you got What's some up, opinions Banner? on that, man. Good morning. I, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's all about the money. It's a, okay. But who controls the money? When I turn on the That's TV, the which, which I very rarely do, big pharma seems to control the money on TV. By the way, there's plenty of alcohol ads, you know, beer ads. And if they let cigarette people, you know, if they let them advertise on TV, they would plenty of billboards and uh, magazines. Yeah, mate, there's, but my point is, is that those are huge industries in this country and each one would have something big time to benefit. I mean, big tobacco already grows a smokable product, man. Yeah. Uh, big alcohol already grows or already has separate dis distribution facilities. I mean, if you want to sell cannabis and you want to kill the dispensaries, just give it to the liquor stores, man. You know, yeah. you want to squeeze every little guy out or girl, dude. Do you give it to the liquor store. About and, all the heavyweight industries. And then think about big pharma coming in and just being like, yo, you need a prescription every five months, man. You know? Yeah. We, need, we need to overbill your insurance for this stuff. Yeah, and you can't be making your own at home. You got to buy it from us. Yeah, it could be dangerous. This is a regulated drug, sir. Yeah, how do you know that yours doesn't have impurities and contaminants in it? Ah. I would be walking backwards, though, taking into consideration the amount of states that already have full recreational legal cannabis. It's not going to be... Okay, I don't see them coming and saying, oh, you guys in Colorado, no more home grow. If you want it, you got to go here. You need a prescription. Um, that's why not? Why, I why not? These guys control the media. So if Big Pharma comes in and says, hey, there is aspergillus that is testing, and this is on the news, and it's in the news this week. Oregon uh, has aspergillus, and they're Flash just- Flesh eating bacteria from your body. Yes, they're just letting it go because they don't because they can't stop it. And the truth is they have zero tolerance on it, which is ridiculous because everything's got bacteria on it. So they are letting a little bit pass. You give Big Pharma that or your big tobacco, well, whoever wants to be against that, they can frame that so- negatively for for us so i think it's important that we have some allies but i don't know i do know i don't think anybody the schedule there are a few people working in the home growers best interest let's put it that way what who well there's no money in that right that's my point who's going to do that freaking canna yeah Good luck so canna going up against big uh, that's big the pharma. thing that seems to be at risk from my view they're calling i mean this. yes sir go on scotty I'll just say I found something they're calling this the Goldilocks option of cannabis reform. And isn't Goldilocks not too hot and it's not too cold? It's just it's perfect. Just no, right. It's really somewhere in the middle. OK. And do without an election coming up 2024. If you have too much of a hot issue and you're going to polarize people and, you know, they're going to be it, it's not good when you polarize people. Too little of an issue. Nobody gives a crap. You're right in that Goldilocks zone where you're like, I don't think they should have, it, you know, or, or hey, I think it's time. You know, we've been wasting our money on it. And by the way, from what I saw there's over 50% of Republicans that think that the war on drugs is a waste of money and definitely a majority of Democrats. So you'd be dumb. Yeah. So hmm, who is all for that still? Who could that be? The big, big money, man. They just got to figure out what we how many billions of dollars of tax revenue came in last year from cannabis? Billions, man. And the Fed isn't getting any of that. Uh, they got to fix that well, election they, cycle coming up. I mean, to be fair though, they don't make they don't make tax revenue on alcohol sales, the state, or tobacco for that matter. The state that's only state taxes there. Pretty sure it's all regulated. That's the state regulates that. The ATF right. controls like they try to get rid of the trafficking like between states. The federal government is a mess. I'm just going to tell you, I got a, a letter in the mail a couple days ago that's saying that they haven't processed my 2020 taxes yet. And I'm like, I've already, you know, I'm, I'm current on my taxes and what. And I called up and they go, no, no, we've received them. We just haven't processed them right. yet. And then right after I hung up the phone and then there was a new news article about SpaceX. And I, and I go, how many rockets did SpaceX launch between the time I mailed my tax return and the time they still haven't read it? And the answer was 264. <laughs> They've shot 264 rockets into space before our government can open my letter wow. and take my money. Anyway, there's my rant, sir. 
I can tell you that, I mean, this, it, to me, and I'm just whatever talking like it's like a hippie, like, why is it even scheduled at all? You know, one thing I see here in the news, That's schedule it. three will allow businesses to you know, commercial growers, people that are licensed through the state and all that jazz to be able to take, start to take traditional tax to business deductions, expenses. So if you're in that area of the growing market, good for you. Well, um, we've talked about that it, though. I uh, just, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we talked about that. Yeah, you've got like over a 70% effective tax rate right now. Other businesses have a 30%. What's that do? That squeezes the little guy out. Now, what happens to big people come in with lobbyists, the guys that know congressmen, and get them to change the tax burden for cannabis after they've squeezed all the little guys out? Um. Yes. It's always. And maybe it's not the now that you can see like I right, Scotty's had more espresso than me this morning. I'm still getting going. fired up. You man. <laughs> the, uh, Bulletproof. Yeah, I will say. say why. It's different, but not, kind of the same. People comment on this. You know, I see room for a lot of people. I was amazed to see how many craft breweries because it could succeed in the past 10 years of popping up all over the place in little strip malls up to the fact of Anheuser Busch, which in turn, just like happens in cannabis, will come down sometimes and buy craft brewers, but still let them keep their branding just to control that brand. Um, but there still does seem to be room for everybody down to the smallest brewery that only has a, you know, a, a very small group of people that go there. Like, for example, in my neighborhood, uh, Ridge Meadows Brewing, you could fit maybe 30 people in there. They have four different, five different taps, and then it goes up from there. I think there's room for everybody. Is the there schedule, not with think? schedule three though, man? With schedule three, Why? there's not because you, the big pharma or somebody controls it. You can't just go to a steroid bar or a Vicodin bar. I guess that's schedule two. Tylenol with codeine bar. <laughs> man. <laughs> right? Yeah, man. Yeah, that totally far kills far. any kind of consumption kind of stuff. Right? Yeah, I think so. And then big Which pharma gets ridiculous. their hands on it. Big pharma don't let you go eat the. Are you guys think schedule three to me means for one, the two big things are. The fact that if you're in the business, you can start to act like a business with proper expenses and deductions and all that. And also uh, now is medically recognized by the FDA. It has medical value, whereas Schedule 1, it doesn't. Um, beyond that, each state, we've covered this in the show, has their own. Oh, look at this state. And uh, uh, Nevada is going to open lounges. Tally, we're covering here in the news today. They're going to start. Actually, that was the last show. They're going to have lounge. So you think like and federal what happens? is going to start to just trump yeah. all this and shut it down. The way it goes is they go, hey, man, if you do this, you can do it. Fine. But you don't get any of our, our uh, highway taxes. You don't get any of this money. And so all of a sudden they're like, dude, all right, all right, I guess I'm not going to you know, do the legal weed thing. or I'm not going to do the cannabis cafes thing because I miss out on all this other federal money. It's fucking dirty, man. Sorry. You can you can. Uh, it's super dirty F-bomb. because if you did deschedule it. It would eliminate all of those problems. You and wouldn't it, have any problems with banking mm-hmm. or the tax or yep. any of that stuff. That all would go away. The and only reason people. is to have it scheduled is so that you can control it. It's the only reason. You could open up your own. You want to talk about a micro brew, brew place? You open up your own uh, grow place. You can see the plants growing in there. You got five or six strains that are always coming down. It'd be a great business. There's no reason why the government needs to be involved any more than a bar. Make sure we're selling safe product. You want to come in and test the product every now and again? Great. And the states, the states, some of the states are working towards the model you just set where, hey, look, I mean, we've realized you guys can't open consumption lounges and sell like without being able to have a product there, preferably your own. Same model we'll see at, you know, micro brews in places such as you know, New Belgium. Right. And well, I'm sure many of the listeners have heard of New Belgium and Four Collins, Colorado. They have a great community like thing. Who's there. that owned by? Test- Who's that owned by? I don't know. Lar- what's that? I don't know the largest or German. Not. Yeah, the largest German no, beer Inbev? manufacturer in the world. InBev. Wait, yeah. hold on. But nobody, nobody's testing produce that goes to the farmers market. No. Oh, at the farmers who's, market. Who's, who's testing that? Nobody. By the way, that is. Couldn't, what if? What if I got? What if I got heavy metals in my pumpkin? That it's a law, man. They're saying that you can. Ah, oh, shit. It's in. Jeez, oh, man. I got to. My watch point my is that it's just, it, there is no re, there is no good reason other than to control it and to profit from it. Of for, course, for a certain group of people. Of course, that's man. it. And and it just that's my brother. What else is there? And so, like, and the parallels are more along the lines of alcohol and produce, in my opinion. So, 
You don't call for produce? alcohol. We have bars. You can get it at a restaurant. Can I borrow your lighter, sir? Oh, well, that's shit. your advanced. Dude, I have an advanced lighter. nutrient sense design that lighter. Mine. That's not mine, everybody. That's uh, and <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Go ahead, Banner. You're in the middle of a deep thought. No, I was just ranting because I just think the whole thing is just so overblown. Money grab. I wanted to rant. By the way, I'll throw in right here. If you guys are having fun right now, you're having a good Saturday morning, enjoying the show, comment, like, subscribe, please help grow the channel, help grow the show, help put prohibition down. And I'll get on my rant now, which is I was just thinking out loud. We've all seen how do I word it uh, without any PTSD? Um, Big Pharma, Big Pharma's influence on the media with the last major event we had. Huge influence on the media. It was unbelievable to see the division in people, families, friends, general public, etc. cetera. Uh, if they were to try to do that, because Scott, you mentioned earlier with cannabis and you said, oh, say there's mold in it or just try to paint this horrible mm-hmm. picture. But like sometimes that are still trying. You know what? The reason that won't work the same as, as it did with the C word is because they already done did that. They did, did it like the, in the poster behind me. A vicious racket with its arms around your children. The smoke of hell. The devil's harvest. When they push, they've already pushed so much misinformation on cannabis during prohibition. People have wised up over fifty percent plus, probably sixty. Oh, dude, it's wait, over wait, seventy. Wait, no, it's over seventy percent now. now. Proves it. Wait, uh, people over haven't 70. wised up, Thank dude. People haven't wised up. We are doing everything we can with the media I to disagree. make them dumber and more polarized. All right, man. but hold on. So seriously, we can look it up, Grambo. You can fact check me, but the acceptance of cannabis, like yes. at least for medical, is over seventy mm-hmm. percent in the in the U.S. It's. I would love to know what other <laughs> topic you can get seventy percent of Americans to agree on. Yes, and the other thirty percent, I think, those are the laggards. You know, in they're, marketing, they're, they'll them. get there. Either that or they'll never get there. Actually, the the most recent data I'm seeing right here is actually shocking even to me. It says that the uh, net should be legal 88%. Dude, come on. So that's my point. There this, is no other topic that you could get Americans to agree on. That's why that's that a percentage. Big BS topic. There's dog and pony show of the next election. That's so what I break down. Sh- it's uh, 59 for med and rec, 30 for med only, and 10% say not legal. So essentially, 88% are in some version of let it be out there, but not necessarily only 50% so, wreck. Man, it doesn't look like insane. the same. So what I'm seeing with that is that Budweiser and uh, the big tobacco and big alcohol are going to win over big pharma. That tells me that double the amount of people want reschedule or deschedulization and yeah, reschedule. So, so hey, we're, we're, just to think about it for a second, if, if the social acceptance is that high, who cares if it's schedule three? Nobody. Well, because you can get caught, man. I had a, a friend of mine that has a daughter. And, I'm and, sorry. Uh, just real quick. She's 18. She's got a med card. She's able to smoke. Her mom doesn't like it. Her mother-in-law, her me- that's her stepmother. Sorry, her wicked stepmother. So she was keeping all the paraphernalia and all the weed in her car, mm. which was so dumb. So her, uh, my buddy said, hey, just keep it in the garage or keep it in the house. You'll be fine. The stepmother found it and threw everything away. Oh, man. Yeah, but you don't want to keep it in your car. You know? But like this is this is what people think versus what the top the conversation is about. The conversation's about literally who's going to make money on it. But you can see that everybody wants it is okay with it. Big alcohol, big tobacco talk. can't do anything with the schedule three anyway. Schedule three doesn't mean you can sell it at gas stations or quickie marts over the counter or any of that. It still has to be through a doctor prescribed. It has to you have to go to your doctor. You have to do all that jazz. So not if you have a card. A, if you have a med a card, medical man. card. Hey, you go so who gave you your medical card? The state the or the doctor? Feds? The doctor. Yeah. On a state power. rule. On a state law. Correct. For now. But not on a federal law. For now. You know what I mean? Who's, yeah. Well, yeah, but who's to know right. if it goes federally legal and all of a sudden you're, you know, a doctor that is federally insured and all that stuff that's part of a multi-state organization? Uh uh, the, yeah. So the reality is there's all this nonsense, like legal framework and regulations all built up around it. And the reality is that we don't really need any of it. And no. so what they're arguing about is how to change all the nonsense. Well, and, do you, so, and like it should be just getting rid of the nonsense. But if you if you get rid of the nonsense, yes, you're right. Then it does become like tobacco a very, or I'm sorry, alcohol, a very fragmented industry. And even tobacco, yeah, right? there are a lot of cigar, fine cigar makers. Largely controlled by the, or regulated by the states, which is kind of what uh, like all the existing setups are now. Yeah. 
I don't know, dude. Would you be mad about like a tobacco model? Or I should say an alcohol, like the liquor. If your liquor store had as many kinds of weed as they have as many kinds of cigarettes. I mean, in a perfect world, it's like the tomato or pepper model that I grow at home. But I mean, because I we compare alcohol and cannabis and sure, there's tons of responsible users with alcohol that enjoy a drink or two and no issues. But the fact that alcohol can kill you so easily and how accessible it is and how marketed it is to everybody that, that life is good and everybody's sexy that drinks is ridiculous. <laughs> It does make um, people sexy. It does make people sexy. Um, yeah, you know, and it's uh, it just you're reminding me of Cascotti. You're mentioning um, the messaging on TV, which is just a service announcement or just a deep thought. You can always turn that shit off. I mean, here in Canada and most other countries in the world, they don't allow pharmaceutical companies to advertise on TV. And less and less people, I think, are probably watching TV these days. Maybe your household a little different, Scotty. My wife watching the dude grow show the murder. Hang on, you're so right, though. I was thinking about that. I'm like, I can honestly remember I used, or back in the day, if I was making fun of somebody snooty, I'd be like, I don't even own a TV. And now if you ask me a TV show I watch, I'd be like, I don't even watch TV. I cut the cord, bro. Yeah, but there's just too much. And it's not it wasn't, when was Kill Your TV? When was that from the 80s? I don't know, but I Kill did. television. Yeah. I did put that. I put my TV on its side. <coughs> had one of those thirteen-inch black and whites. Put it on its side, and then put that from a magazine there, which is a kill your TV. I put mine in my fireplace, and I just have the the fire uh, on it all the, the time. fire log. That's awesome, right so there, can, man. Out of curiosity, can pharmaceutical companies advertise on YouTube? I haven't noticed. I haven't paid enough attention because I have the paid account, so I don't really get I'm ads. Sure. I'm sh- hey, by the way, I get shamed for that. I'm like, yeah, I have the paid account, so I don't get ads. And all my guys, Banner and High C, are ads people. I'm like, what are you doing, man? You're not even doing your homework, bro. Yeah, Gotta watch the ads, didn't know, man. You didn't know uh, YouTube's, I just pulled this. It says, Farmer's Embrace of Digital Advertising includes YouTube. Guess what? YouTube in 2022, top 29 billion in advertising oh my god this is 29 billion it's <laughs> so crazy that's wow. not just that's not big farmer that's across the board okay uh, here's the thing man 20 percent of that is the budget the amount of money that pfizer just threw they threw like seven billion dollars into a cannabis company pfizer dude so yeah 21 billion seven billion you're talking crazy amounts of big money showing up for this industry now that's why i think this is so important i think if we can get our community together you know we've got i don't know how many thousands of people it's not crazy big but to go and talk to their friends and family about it talk about how silly descheduling is how uh you know just allowing it to be you know to be a, a free thing is really the way to go Man, I think it's important and you got power with it. If, if 10 or 20 or 30,000 people can go over and make an impact and tell five people and change their minds and so on and so on and so on. I got a question for you. Yes, so, do you think that you could that there will ever be more cannabis consumers than, let's say, smokers or yes. drinkers? Yes, it's really good. Have you tried it? Like as a percentage. Dude, it's way better than cigarettes, man. It's way better. Yes, because you can smoke weed at night, relax, unwind and be like, God, Jerry was such a dick at work, man. And then go. <laughs> Why then, see? Fall- I got to use Jerry. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Jimmy. All right. And then say, smoke yeah. a, a duber at night and say, man, you know, I get him, man. I get his reality, of course. As opposed to drinking five shots or five beers over the course of a few hours, man, you, one of them is going to make it harder to wake up. Do you th- I mean, do you see a future where, you know, like remember back in the 60s, like the the dudes would drive home from their, you know, their their job with their like shirt and tie they drink? and they had their little car- cocktail cart and you'd make <laughs> yes. yourself a cocktail and, you know, your wife's like in the kitchen. I like, love when they, dinner. the old cars have bars in them. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, bar cars. <laughs> yes. So, like, do you ever see that changing where people aren't having like that beer at night, drink, watching the game, or to relax, and it's just uh, weed? Like, to the same percentage. Obviously, there's people that do that. I think both beer and weed go good together too, man. Both. So, yeah. you, so do you think that people are, are more likely to have beer and weed, or do you think they're going to switch Here's from what happens, beer so. to? You go, hey, man, I uh, been drinking too many beers. I'm not going to cut it out because that's and. Brett, you're the guy to talk about this, but uh, I'm, yeah, so I'm going to replace. I'm only going to do three beers, and I'm, I'm going to smoke a joint, you know, and that'll yeah. Or I'm going to smoke my joint, get all loose, and then wait. Yeah, I really want a beer, and then drink. How many, so well, ideally, you, go ahead, Banner. So when you go to the 
when you go to a local brewery, it's more of like a drinking kind of crowd. Right. Uh, like, do you, how many of those people do you think also smoke weed? Everyone is hanging out with me a lot because I'll go well, out and smoke Well, not in your circle. Dude, necessarily. a lot because I will say anybody want to go out and smoke. Both. So it's, it's both. Half the, I mean, I'm in Colorado. Yeah. A local brewery. What, what about you, Brett? When you, when you go down to your local brewery, is there a bunch of people talking outside or what? No, I'd say it'd be probably be 50, 50, 50 as far as if I'm in the, the brewery, it's really the only spot I go to is the brewery every once in a while. Cause it's like cheers or wasn't that that old show? Was it cheers? They yell dude when you walk dude. in. Dude. No, no, it's not that much. I mean, maybe once every 10 days I go there or something, but, um, it's, I would say 50, 50, but, uh, they're not toking there while they're drinking or anything. And you got to do it. Let me give you the recipe the right way. Ideally you get really high first. <laughs> like if I sit there. And I go to drink some beers and like, you know what? It's Saturday. I'm going to let loose. I got a mountain biking event on TV. I'm going to get a six pack. If I drink half of that six pack and then start smoking instead of smoking first, um, it's not as effective. The the drunk or the intoxication from alcohol. I hate to say the word drunk. Three beers. I mean, it, it was wasted. Drunk, but uh, uh, it, well, it's it, real. It, beer. You start it's not three, two. The effects of cannabis don't uh, you don't benefit as much the more alcohol you put in your body. And then they eventually get to a point, of course, that it turns negative. But I wanted to ask a question, too, in this conversation before we switch it up. Um, the the only thing I really concern about with the descheduling, rescheduling and all this stuff, and it's not descheduling, is growers rights. And I always mention that. Does anybody in we got a fall prohibition report and asking us to comment on coming up, but. Are we worried about growers' rights? Because that would be a massive to back up or like just to see, working backwards to see them try to take them away on a state-by-state state level. Tough. And could they even do that? And how would they do that? I mean, just, you know what I mean? Like, you ever try to give a kid a toy and then take it away? It's not easy. <laughs> yeah, it's not <laughs> easy. They're, they're, I don't think they're going to come and try to rip our growers' rights from us where we have it. The will is, isn't there. Yeah, this is something, this is a popularity contest for, for politicians, I think. This is something that's 88% approval rating, and they're going to get behind it. Yeah, that sounds so like then, a bad political fact, move. It sounds like I would say move, that right? I give the, the this going to schedule three, a half to maybe three fourths of thumbs up out of two thumbs up, because if it makes cannabis more medically available to people that strictly have no interest in recreational use, they don't really have much inference. They've, they haven't been sold on the fact that, oh, this helps my grandma's glaucoma arthritis, which is true, but they have an ailment that doctors like, look, I know cannabis can help you with this, and here's sure. what I'm going to give you to try. I'm for that. If it's going to facilitate that access, check out the hash apple, getting milky, baby, getting milky. Here you go. Nice. Um, what about so, if your doctor uh, says, just like your doctor might say, hey, have you tried um, you know, an aspirin a day or what's a, a vitamin? No, no, no. I'm, oh. think, I'm thinking the opposite. You know, have you tried vitamin C? You should go and try that. You can get it at your grocery store. Hey, have you tried cannabis? Maybe try a cannabis pill or a cannabis suppository. I think a doctor would recommend that. That is one. a good sign of a good doctor where their yeah. immediate reaction is to just to pro- immediate, like, prescribe something. Yeah. You try getting outside. <laughs> Exercise a little. You know what I'm saying? Dude, don't get me on my rant when, when there's so many things in front of like so many basic things in front of when you're addressing the problem that doctors pass up like, okay, so uh, how do you eat? Yeah. yeah like yes. you said, how many times do you actually see the sky or go outside yes. and like walk around? Like, let me, let's get to the basic. I want to take it to some DDC producers here for a moment, Scotty, plus the Apple. Let's go to the hash Apple. Shout out to DDC producer. Oh, cannabis 613 in Canada. Canada. Now the caffeine's kicking in. Look how milky this baby is. Now does he do tilt it to the side. Booyah. Wow. Money. Is, is that model after a real apple? Yeah, I mean, it looks like an apple. Who's seen yes, it? Yes, it is. Yeah, a little neat. Yeah, right didn't there. we have this on? We had this on. Yeah, but who has actually smoked out of an apple before? Oh, oh you mean like a real apple? Yeah, I'm just oh, saying. Yeah. I imagine it's I've definitely inspired. Done that. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely too. done that. And I've definitely been like, this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. <laughs> of course, it's a hippie. Uh, you know? My my experience <laughs> with that is more of in the context of desperation and having no other choice. Really? And being really happy that like you had some sort of device. I'll admit the first time anybody ever passed that to me, I didn't. So I just, this chick just passed me an apple. I wasn't paying attention. You took a bite out of it. Yeah, I didn't know she was tripping or not. I was just like, <sighs> okay, man. I just 
past it. I thought we were looking at the apple. Wow, man. You know? Hey, we're passing the apple down the line, man. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, if y'all didn't know, the DDC producers make the show happen. Back from the show, since like whenever Scotty came up with, hey, we should make a crew. We should call it the DGC. Dude grows Don't crew. get caught. You know, they're like having <laughs> producers behind this and being able to be creative and not be sponsor laden and just worried about it. Thank you so much. It was started off here with wasted years 420. Does that and mean anything to you? Waste, Hang on, we wasted, wasted years. years. Nothing. Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden. How come you're younger than dude? But you know that. I'm a metalhead. I've seen. Yeah, Iron he's a metalhead. Yeah, dude. I've seen Maiden a few times. Yeah. Eddie. I appreciate Iron Maiden. Eddie lives for their shirts. I remember yes. their shirts. Their their shirts were pretty dope. The artwork was pretty sweet. Eddie. Me and, and Banner were talking about this book that where I'm reading and he's read it. Marketing Lessons of the Grateful Dead. <laughs> and it just talks about things like uh, like Eddie. Eddie is that uh, Iron Maiden. He's the mascot. Like the character. He's like the mascot. Yeah. Yeah. And Man, I didn't mascot. Know, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know any song, but I, in middle school, I knew everything Iron Maiden because all the kids were wearing the shirts. Dude, peace of mind cover. It's just so cool. Yeah, I remember doing an art project. We had to like do an album cover or something. You had to draw right. it or whatever, and I did that yeah. one. <laughs> moved here from Penn. I moved sorry to Florida, like from Pennsylvania, in like the beginning of just in the middle of the Coke madness. I'm in the fifth grade. I go to school, and people are wearing Black Sabbath, Molly Hatchet, and Iron Maiden T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm yeah, I gotta catch up here, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I was moving fast. It's all speeding up here towards the end. <laughs> also gonna shout out to Caveman Dave. Don't forget to get out of the cave, Dave. <laughs> Green Dingo. Green, Green Dingo. Dingo. Verde. I would go with Verde Dingo. Verde Dingo. Verde. Hey, I uh, had uh yes, also sir. it's Sunny Sunny Mectopia. I wanted to shout out, you know, uh I think she might have got one recently, but this is most news. What's up, Sunny Bactopia? Just if you guys have been on dudegrows.com, be patient. We're revamping. She's like, I want to post. I'm trying to help out. I want to get some grow talk. I'm getting errors. So if anybody's trying to use uh, dudegrows.com, just be patient. Banner is on it. We're on it. It's going to yeah. take a minute. I think Banner said there's like 61,000 <laughs> users or something. Like we got to clean stuff up. But let's shout out Banner. We talked about making a community. Uh, Banner joined. How many years has it been? Since we hung out at that barbecue, no, is it a you know, it nine? bluegrass? Nine? I pretend to like bluegrass. All right, it's almost it's a tech banner. Man. Yeah, and but he's come in. And it's a labor of love for us, you know. So uh, to have you be uh, uh, rebuild to build the website originally and then to rebuild it, it's a labor of love. So I appreciate it, man. It's yeah. well, this the, isn't a business. Can, this is something I can where see Scotty. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Sir. Or not a business. It's 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 about promoting cannabis, man. It's about promoting cannabis legalization and growing your own, which I'm pretty damn psyched about. Yeah, it's like it might work. Yeah, if anyone cares, we're really what we have to do is just trim it down and start over. There's so many. There's just so much old junk on there. Yeah, we're and not so. The new one is going to be a little simpler. It's going to be pretty basic, but hopefully, it's going to run faster for everybody. And the stuff that you want to look at is. Really, the stuff that everybody posts and comments on, yeah. anyways. That's why I want to go to the site. Yeah. So uh, just nice and super clean and fast, and uh, hopefully everybody's going to be able to post without any issues. I dig it. Man. Yes. Yes. Remember, man. Yeah. I can see Scotty at the uh, Bluegrass Show banner. If this is how it went down, he's like, "Man, this guy's into web design. We need a web to guy. Like, I'm gonna just really, I'm gonna try to learn the lyrics to this song. I'm gonna love Bluegrass today." You yeah, walked up the banner and like, dude, this is an awesome concert. You digging? I don't remember shit, but I remember when I said the banner, man, because we started talking and it was when I was reading all these marketing books, really working hard, just building funnels. You were all about funnels. funnels. You go, so what are you into, man? And I go, funnels, bro. <laughs> funnels. Sounded pretty cool, right? Got yeah, him, you got him to come over, man. <laughs> Sounded like you knew what you were talking about. Ah, <laughs> uh, shoot, man. We really started getting fired up. And when Banner showed up, uh, High C kicked us into another gear. And I will say, <laughs> Grambo, man, you're on fire, brother. It's great. You are so into your job. Uh, I love it. I love the clickbaity title yesterday. <laughs> it's over. They said I was like, I, in the comments, they're like, Grambo's like Nate Dog. This guy's getting everywhere. I was like, I like that. I love I'm it. I'm just man. on everyone's track. I love it. All right. Including who? Who's track? Easy Day Cultivar. Oh, not bad. <laughs> Easy man. Days Cultivator. They're going to be on soon, man. Shout out. They got some great Easy seeds, days. some good autos I've grown out. So shout out to Scott over there. Scott. 
I think he's a cultivators. And uh, who you got, Banner? Oh, hey, I got one for our, uh, Do You Right, our buddy Noah. He sent me uh, a box of beans that I need to figure out how to give away to y'all. Nice. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah, I was looking for my Joy Yank yesterday, and I found a bunch of beans, man. We should probably give some of these away, too. Let's do it. Yeah. And if I remember... Ryan, Noah was... Oh, go ahead. I was, Noah was just on the show recently, so uh, look back a couple shows if you guys didn't catch a good hang with Noah out of Virginia. That was a good show. Don't forget to check it. Yes, and I think these are Screaming Blueberry and Cherry Paloma uh, Femmes. And I like my blueberry screaming. <laughs> screaming blueberry. <laughs> Some of that blue cherry. The screaming, I, I, if I remember right, it's got, uh, yeah, Noah will correct me, uh, Screaming Eagle. It's got some Duke Diamond genetics in there, if I remember correctly. And then he got a blueberry cut. I don't remember which one. But I think that's uh, where Screaming Blueberry comes from. That's his uh, uh, mail, I guess, or his line. Uh, that's that's what he's been working on. He, he created the Screaming Blueberry. I will tell you, if you watch that Noah, uh, do you, when Noah was on a couple of shows ago, dude, you will understand you will understand all you know the you know the all the lingo you know the s ones from the back crosses. Scotty knows more about it than I do now. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I, I know the say, basics. If you guys, if you guys need a shout out, you guys are having a good time, man. We're up against Google, YouTube, big business. We've been talking about big business this show, We're trying to help push prohibition down. Uh, when you join, dudegrows.com forward slash support is where the benefits are. Pays for itself at ten dollars a month, man. Thirty percent off. Real growers products, grow dots recharge. Another great benefit, guys, often overlooked is the Discord community and the expert growers hanging out over there, guys. We do a show every Friday. A lot of heavy grow talk is going down. I will repost that for you guys listening, your producers, in case you don't catch it over on Patreon. Uh, but all the benefits, do grows.com forward slash support. Yes. Make the show happen. So bring it, guys. It's fall season. It's time to grow. It's time to get growing uh, and time to keep doing the do grow show. Yes. I say that as a seasonal grower. I say fall season, time to get growing just because, uh, yeah, I'm getting my endo fired up. But we'll talk about that in a few of what's going on. Yeah, I was actually hanging out at one in the morning. I was just doing my grow yesterday. It was fun. Actually setting up a legitimate grow, barely experimenting, okay? That's good, man. I know. Make some, I, let's have a nice harvest this fall. Yeah, a couple buckets. We need to re up the buckets. You need it. You need a nice harvest, don't you, Scotty? Aren't you? Because you know, you're... You're running light. You're out. Hey, everybody does, man. It's not like it used to be. Running light on the dock. Outdoor is just about to come down. You guys should. I mean, I don't know who all. Whoa. Actually, am I the only one on the team that grows outdoors as far as the uh, official, you know, Scotty? I know you don't. You say you got code enforcement. Even does it count? Property sometimes, well, does it count if I have like a buddy? Fin- does it count if I have a buddy finishing plants for me? Outside, yeah, mm-hmm. that's pretty cool, though, man. Yeah, I think huh. that cow, that cow, that's, that's, that's all about pretty cool. Finishing plants outside. Well, our uh, our mechanic buddies uh, yeah. got a little greenhouse, <laughs> so um, I stocked him up with with a few for auto. Dude, uh, that guy's little greenhouse sounds like a Toyota Previa with a sunroof. <laughs> you know what I mean? It could be. He's a mechanic, though, so <laughs> ah, shoot. It, it's better oh, than you think. Shoot. Hey, will you just click this as big tobacco pivoting to cannabis just so I can see, is this really what cannabis cigarettes will look like? Scroll on down for you. Just a picture I thought was interesting, Grambo. Huh, is that one of them cannabis cigarettes? Yeah. Is that a regular cigarette? Sure. Marlboro Looks Green. Looks tasty. Is that, did you ever seen they had cigarette rolling machines you could get your hands on back in the day and you would get the blanks and you could put the weed? Oh, in there. it was like what's, a, what's with the creases, like a little pinball though? machine? Looks kind of sloppy, don't it? It almost is like the size of a Casio keyboard, but you would get these, but it would, it would resin up so bad. You just had to poke like a hole through the, uh, you know, with like a coat hanger uh, through the filter because mm-hmm. it would just resin up. Mm-hmm. That's how bad prohibition was where you were like, maybe we can make it look like cigarettes. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it sucked too. Did that you ever sucks. roll a joint with notebook paper? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you ever light a bowl with notebook paper and burn your hair? Yeah. Yeah. Done that? <laughs> yes. <Nope. laughs> I don't know, man. Did we t- okay, I got one more thing. Just click the Pfizer bets on medical cannabis with six point seven billion dollars. So with a B. So that is six point so so that is six 
6,700 6, piles of million dollars. <laughs> so you take a million dollars, you got 6,700 of them, and you go, I would take that and put it in a cannabis industry. What do they buy that's worth that much? Don't just, know, but just why did they want to pay that much for that's it? That's what I'm saying. What what? How did they get to that yeah. crazy value? Well, we can't just be the title readers. <laughs> Shared without reading. Shared, but not oh, read. That's the name of the game. Pfizer's <laughs> um, entrance looks like the T2, like ending boss scene. Like this is like where Skynet was housed. Hey, Holy crap, crap. you're right. Across the street from there. <laughs> crazy. Uh, for what it's worth, I made a point to read all these articles last night. So good match. Oh, Pfizer's entrance again, Grambo. That's where they should play the Star Wars. Dun, 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 dun. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. while you're walking in and out. <laughs> Seriously. I got to be honest. Reminds you. Until you get cancer. And then right. these guys are your best buddies, you know? Yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah I, we shouldn't pay with such a broad brush. I do agree that Big Pharma has done a lot of good work. We shouldn't focus only on the negative. Um, and we're just like butthurt since we're in the. Uh, the <laughs> Stay in your lane. Arena, so. Stay in your lane. Man, how much yeah. exercise do you get from uh, talking a bunch? Because I just reached my goal, according to my watch. Mm, like I can leaning, see your cheeks kind of getting a little. I think leaning back in the chair counts as a step. You know? <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, it says Johnson and Johnson's involved. It's kind of scary, y'all. Oh, I'm yeah, scared. I was just at double least, dude, all right. I was just double checking who made Marinol, also known as Syndros and Drobin. Drobin. Yeah, so curious. Dro- what, why Dro- hasn't that taken off, by the way? Because it's THC it pills. Sucks. And THC pills it's, suck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It sucks. Hey, Health Human Services is about joining just to the Schedule 3, just to know what it would join. Ketamine, anabolic steroids, testosterone, and a hodgepodge of drugs to which weed has no obvious connection. I mean, that is that is weird, right? Yeah. But you could say that, so replace ah, weed with alcohol in that the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting, man. Well, I'm sure we'll touch on it more, but I thought it'd be, I thought it was an interesting thing to talk about this Saturday morning. Well, I'm on the happened? fence if it's going to be interesting. And it's what it involves when it involves like politics. That's just like somebody the other day of uh, being up here in Canada or whatever, like in, in a Canadian, like heard like your government shutting down or something. I'm like, I have no clue, man. If you live there, you know how many times this cycle happens and eventually you just tune out and you're like, I don't know. Really? So it's just, yeah, we'll see if it's interesting. We will follow it, though. I, I hope it's for the, the positive. I hope it medicinally benefits people that need more access to cannabis, whether it's through prescriptions or health care coverage that's paying for their cannabis. I'm all for it. I think I'm all for it, we'll say. More information needs to be had. Banner, you got a letter from the government the other day, didn't you? Said they were suckers. <laughs> Nothing. No public enemy uh, in the house. Man. I'm trying to think of the next line. Uh-huh. Me and Banner are the same age. We have every every one of the same references in our head. Love me some Chuck D once in a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. Done. By the time I get to Arizona, heavy shit. I, go, um, I like so, the other ones. What was Flavor of Life, right? When Flavor Flavor. Strawberry Sarsaparilla, that one? I just remember I thought they all had their shit together. I was like, yeah, man, that's a band with a message. And I didn't understand Flavor Flame ever. But that Flavor of Life. Crack. It was interesting, right? Him and I think it was Rock, all, Rocky's I mean, old wife. I think Rocky it was all three. about the crack, man. Four. Wow, man. Um, Good stuff. So since we've uh, talked about Schedule 3 stuff today, we do a fall, pro- fall of Prohibition report every week. We usually feature a new state. I said, why don't we feature this? You know, if you guys have opinions on Schedule 3, because it's kind of like fall of Prohibition to a degree. Oh, yeah. It change is. things. So let us know. Go over to Instagram, Dude Grow Show. And comment, and next week we'll be featuring your comments. I want to hear what the DDC and peeps have to say. What's up, One Eyed hanging out there? With this? He's got the look. One Eyed's got the look. He's approaching ZZ Topness. Ah, oh, it's awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, go to Instagram and uh, let us know what you think, man. It's very cool to hear from everybody out there in different states um, that have their strong opinions, especially with this. So appreciate that, and you'll hear from us next week on. Yeah, sorry. I was just looking at some of the stuff I collected to uh, to talk about. And you want to talk about state by state? We talk about like why Oklahoma, with three million people, has so much cannabis being grown. <laughs> Oklahoma cost of entry mainly was was nothing, and yeah, fifteen hundred, twenty five hundred dollars, twenty five. You can do what you want. So the right. idea, 
the idea is a lot of this weight is just disappearing and might be making it to other states. I don't know. Oklahoma regulators okay. closed five operations and seize untraceable cannabis. Mm. Yeah. I thought, well, how did if it was untraceable? <laughs> I, know, I know. How did they seize it? I got confused and thought invisible, but that's huh. untraceable. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it was uh, 14, 4,850 pounds of weed. That's a lot of weed, man. A lot of weed. I just thought it was interesting. That's what, uh, wait, how did they get it? I uh, probably just showed up. No, it was like a vehicle <laughs> stop or did they bust Multi the agency investigation has resulted in the closure of five marijuana businesses and a seizure, seizure of thousands of plants of untraceable cannabis. Wow. You, you, wouldn't you think that Oklahoma police and authorities wouldn't really care about that? I don't know. That's that. No, because they rely on that tax money. You want to show up in Oklahoma, just pay your taxes. Well, no, but this is just yeah. stuff exported that you're not getting tax on anyways, but they're, you know. Well, it's not allowed to be exported. It's being illegally exported. Yeah, so totally- and I do see <clears throat> enforcement will be ramped up, I think, in the future on people that are growing enough. I don't know if it's going to be like, oh, 20 lighter and up. You're OK if you have an eight lighter. Home grower should be OK. But if they're thinking that you are taking away from their, you know, which plenty of different, they, they made a, I don't know if we featured it on the last show. There's something in the news about where they're trying to make it that if you are a commercial cannabis grower, you can take legal action uh, against if you're finding like a free market or a black market or somebody that's undercutting you or somebody that's breaking the law. So they do want to get those people out of the picture if you're messing with, and don't get me wrong, I'd be on the fence. Scotty, what if I put my life savings Let's say 200, I don't have this in my, my life savings, but let's just say $280,000. I'm going to spend it to get in the cannabis business, set up and grow, and I want to succeed. And all around me, I'm getting like undercut. I'm like, dude, I know that guy over there didn't get any licensing. It'd be very frustrating. So is the issue that the licenses are cheap or is it that you can just have a, basically an unlimited plant count when once you get one. The issue is don't get caught, man. The issue is grow a bunch of plants <laughs> and they disappear. Both, man. Who knows? Both the I things you said wait. were, yeah, were the issue in Oklahoma. I'm pretty sure they're addressing that. I don't think you can get a license for 2,500 still. Uh, give them some comments, but it's, and they're also cracking down more. You know, the one thing they do is make examples of people and make sure it gets in the news and people talk about it. Same thing they used to do to us home growers, Scotty, when we were setting up in Colorado. Sometimes they definitely make an example of, you know, hey, we got these eight lights over here, these ten lights over here. Make sure to let everybody know. Do we Go need ahead. do we, we need places it. that have millions of acres of canopy? Do we need that? That's gonna be your big cannabis and that's gonna be your That seems like that sucks. Man. Yeah, I mean, we already have fairly reasonable small, yeah, you know, what would you call it, craft cannabis? I mean, if you uh, you know, twenty dollars a gram, I would say, for some good, you know, wax or something live. Uh, if you look, yeah, I mean, that seems to be in the the uh, best consumer's interest, in my opinion. I mean, that sounds like a tw- you know, what is it? That's same for a twelve pack, right? It's 16, 18 bucks for a twelve pack. Sixteen, yeah. eighteen bucks for a gram of good good wax. I love the local brewery. I don't think it needs to be cheaper. The local craft brewery model. Yeah, I'm you're not looking for ninety nine cent beers there. You never give a crap because you want you go there. And for as quality. I said, you don't think you don't think there's enough consumers for both. I mean, can we not tie that direct analogy? There is, like I but said, I go to. There is, but you can't go anywhere and consume cannabis like at a restaurant or a club or anything like. Nobody's got consumption. Uh, not yet. No. And, well, that's what I'm you know, saying. That's what do. that's the problem. Any, that's yeah. that's the thing that Currently makes it harder agree. for the craft. And you got to be careful. Do you want somebody that is just ridiculously high getting in the car and driving home? You don't. And as much as I love weed, as much as you can drive out, you know, after smoking a little bit of weed. Counterpoint: You serve alcohol. Yes, exactly. What's the we have a huge problem. We What's have tens difference? of thousands of people a year that. But die people from are that. willing to accept that risk in society of restaurants and bars serving alcohol sure. and people driving home. And what I'm saying is, there's no, it's no different risk in from that from cannabis doing the same thing. You can't say like, oh, you can't, you can't have cannabis and then drive home because you yeah. might crash, and at the same time serve alcohol. Like you can't, yeah. you can't have it both ways like that. Man, it is easy. I would say if you just if you don't really smoke very much and you go to the display, you go to uh, one of those clubs and you don't smoke very much, you can get. I remember I used to get ridiculously like I was floating above everything. I when yeah. I first started smoking weed, you cool. could do the same thing with alcohol though, man. I don't know. A couple of shots at 151, you're good to go. That is a direct correlation. Oh. A direct core. Each ounce of alcohol is a direct correlation to what it does to your body. 
Well, but remember, like, so imagine the the stuff that is going to, you're not really buying flour necessarily. Remember how popular the, the cannabis beverages are becoming? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you could, it's a pretty low dose so that you're not consuming a whole bunch, kind of like light beer. Yeah. Right? So, so the, typically me, max. The yeah. issue there is is just what's like the issue is that they don't allow any of it. It's not that it's dangerous. Like you could easily you if you allow alcohol, there's nothing more dangerous about it. Than letting people consume cannabis in a in a bar. There's uh, an, and just hundred percent. It's absolutely less dangerous. What if they start grommeting? If they what? <laughs> grommeting? <laughs> Grandpa, do you have this this. Uh, Oh, where is it from? The Newport Academy. Yes, click this one, please. What is scrometing and why are more, te- more teens developing it? It's from weed. Okay, scrometing is a new term for a disturbing health trend related to teen marijuana use. No, uh, <laughs> oh this is AI, bro. No, it's, this is like for like mothers, you know, like religious mothers. It combines two words, screaming and vomiting. Okay, teen stuff Ooh. suffering from this <laughs> marijuana induced condition. Just spit my coffee out. <laughs> oh my God, fluctuation in body temperature. Teen suffering from this marijuana induced condition experience episodes of violent vomiting, which are also so severe and painful that it causes the person to scream. Wow. When the teens use marijuana daily or regularly over a long period of time, the risk of scrummeting increases. It's pretty this weird. This is completely right? made up. I think it's like some kind of, I don't know. This what is, is completely this? completely made up. What is this? It's got to have some kind of target market, right? I don't know. It did good for me on this Saturday morning. All right. I enjoyed it. Wow. Sorry. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm YouTubing scrometing to see if we can have any examples. And the no. first link that comes up is from is from the doctors, which I think I know what that is. I think it's some lame show in the States, but it says this is from five years ago. Marijuana causes scrometing with more states legalizing marijuana. Doctors are seeing an influx on patients. Uh, they couldn't even feed it through AI. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Grandpa, they could like? just hang on. They could just feed that article through AI and it'll make like 500 versions of it. Oh, yeah. like everywhere, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So scrometing. And post them to different post- websites. So they also hold on just to, to make sure Sounds I'm like not life trying goal. to discredit because I. I see other articles here talking about CHS, cannabinoid hypermesis syndrome, which is a real thing where people can get really sick. Um, but I mean, just the fact I wish maybe without grossing this out, grandma in post-production, you can make like an animated image of somebody screaming it and vomiting at the same time. Very <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Can we make up our own verb for like the feeling you get when you're really enjoying cannabis and having a good time and then make like an article about it just to counterbalance the scrometing? Yeah. Hi. We, we need like a we need a, like a sniggler. <laughs> it's time to shout out to our pros, Scotty. Dudegrows.com forward slash pros. More importantly, not just pros, DGC vetted guys. Gear, go to dudegrows.com, use that search bar sale. People are using this to upgrade their grows. We got genetics, we got grow tents, man. We got everything. Dynavat, man. You want to taste your herb with a dryer vaporizer. Point being, all the coupon codes are listed. Dudegrows.com forward slash pros, and I'll throw in here. Merch too, man. Dudegrows.com forward slash merch. What do you want? DGC Throwback Grow Journal from Maestro. Check it out. This is actually a pretty good grow journal. I've actually log everything. Veg bloom, date, feed, flush, foliar feed, transplant, cutting, prune. Very detailed. Custom trays from Lifted Woodworks. What's up? And double pimp. Man, we've been working. We got a little merch game, Scotty. DGC hats. Dudegrows.com. Got nice merch. merch. And if you are a producer, don't forget to go to Patreon first and see that pinned post. You'll get a great coupon code for picking up any of this gear. All right, let's take it to comments, man. Scotty, what you did all the comments today. What did you find? <laughs> this is pretty good, actually. First off, Desert Dude 317 he says, in, first off, I love he calls you <laughs> Garambo. Yeah, it's Guru Grambo. Oh, my together. God. It's Garambo. Garambo. Ah, Garambo. Inside Garambo are two wolves. And they both ate 300 milligrams. I'm I'm hearing that in the Johnny Depp Savage voice. Oh. Inside of Grandma are two yes. wolves. And All right, let me do it again. You guys should do a short. Grandma, make a short for that. That would be good. Dude, Johnny Depp short right? style. Inside Grambo are two wolves. Oh. And they both ate 300 milligram out of the house. How'd I do? That's great. All right. Dude, Savage commercials. That is the 
best thing I'd say on TV, <laughs> but they have it on the internet too. Johnny Depp Savage. Google it. Yeah. Just yell it in your face. All right, I'm going to take uh, wolf. Tony Page. Tony Page called Scotty out. At 30 minutes in, there goes Scotty tossing things down on his desk. Don't treat your trichomes badly. You're abusing some weed, huh? I guess so, man. And Banner, he's kind of right because there's trichomes all over there, right? I have a wooden rolling tray that kind of collects the oh, trichomes. so sticky on the bottom of your laptop. Dude. Ah, Banner, that's one of his uh, pet peeves. Like, he'll look at my laptop and I'll just like want to take like a wipe or something. I'll wipe it down before he touches it. The curse day you're going to scrape it all off and vape it. It occurs to you to clean your laptop, man. You're that kind of guy. You probably wash your car, too. Yeah. I got pickled Rick chiming in. Says, absolutely nothing to do with this episode, but hear me out. If dogs can be used to detect health issues in humans, which is a trip, they can like smell cancer. Couldn't they also be used to detect deficiencies in viroids or pathogens in plants? It'd be cool to have my dog say, hey, homie. Number three needs some potassium. <laughs> Love that, dude. Woof, woof. <laughs> I mean, I have seen it is pretty definitive evidence. I don't know if it was a Netflix special or what it was that they're using dogs to smell like cancer in people. Oh, yeah. You guys know? Yeah. That's craziness. Uh, if we could smell root aphids, man. I mean, we've been, I Same guess, thing. the amount of training it takes is probably pretty intensive, but we're going to go mushroom hunting for some chanterelles tomorrow. Um, and because we got some rains come through and fungi are going to be coming up. And what's worse, wow. you don't find any and you hang out in the woods eating the little shrooms and having a good time anyway. But they train dogs to smell like definitely the like truffles. I don't know if you just said that. And then, yeah, be cool to train a dog for something very valuable. How valuable is your dog if it's a, like very sufficient at smelling cancer? I mean, you don't want to, for me, I'd do it for free. You know, I'd be like four grand an hour. <laughs> four grand an hour. No, I could cause some awkward situations as you're you walking. They have the to dog. be trained. It's not like they're just amazingly good at smell. Hey, your dog's good at smelling cancer, man. Hey, well, you're trained dog for is like, really, uh, it's a big deal, man. They're, they're engineered by the Pfizer Corporation, man. <laughs> she called Rick. I like it. Rand. I'm going to get their dog training to smell hepatitis viroid, potassium deficiency. I mean, dope. Uh, hey, I got one the from Tangy Man. Yeah, the Tangy Man. We were talking about if giant pharma, not giant pharma, but uh, big ag gets their hands on cannabis, what they're going to do with it. We were talking about what Monsanto did with corn, where they did this BT corn, where they took the chunk of, of DNA that kills bugs in Bacillus thuringiensis and inserted it into the corn. So when the bugs eat the corn now, they you know it's gross and they don't want to, they don't populate there. Except that here's what uh, uh, Tangy Man says. I've heard the BT corn actually resulted in applied bacillus thuringiensis losing much of its, of its efficacy in all other plants. Before the BT corn, I don't even remember getting those horrible caterpillars. Oh, so that's what it is. Man. Something else will take over. Yeah. And it's, it's going to all the other plants, all the other, all the... Uh, you- it's, that's not working anymore. You can't cheat Mother Nature like uh, you, for a little your bit. Advantage is for to. a little bit, but it's going to come back and yeah. get you. It happens every time. Got a few billion years on us, man. All right, that's so 4, would you? Would years. you want to grow that at home? I would. Do, do you have a Do you have a difference in opinion whether it that type of thing is grown commercially versus like what you grow at home? Of course, you want to grow craft. You know, craft stuff at home. But, but what if it doesn't get any bugs? Would you grow GM weed know. at home and you don't have to worry about mites or anything like that? You're not recording. Would you no, do are that? You? It's a conflict, man, right? If you're just like, oh, those seeds, just like feminized seeds, right? You're like, oh, I don't have to worry about it, man. I don't have to worry about pulling males. If you're like, oh, that's got the BT gene in it, man, it's not going to get bugs. I don't know. Who's making GM cannabis seeds? Uh, somebody soon. I'm sure it's not happening already. I'm um, sure you don't think Monsanto's working on it. Somebody must have. Bear. Does anybody know of any genetically modified cannabis seeds out there? I don't know. Not it was something going on, especially with the threat of like the hemp thyroid crap going on to where it's genetically modified to be resistant for sure. I'm really on the fence about that as well. I'm not going to go in big on the GMO. I used to love shopping on at Vitamin Cottage in Colorado because that's yeah. their store policy. Um, Here but, we go. You know, it, Right here, man. Uh, GMO cookies, man. GMO garlic cookies. Uh, not GMO, GM. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm trying here, man, you know. 
All right, I got another comment. I'm bringing in uh, yes, Chris Brainstorm. Likes your shopping skills, Scotty. I'm with Scotty. I walk around Home Depot thinking, how can I use this for growing? So it's, <laughs> it is a good a good tactic to get your brain thinking or even go into like even deeper, like a plumbing supply store that has like every fitting and nozzle and valve and like good way yep. to do it. Love doing that. And it's always better to go to a grow store in the end. Bro, this you know sprayer I mean? will be awesome for foliar. Uh, you know, I shouldn't say, man. Go into the sprinkler supply place. There's just certain things that Home Depot doesn't have, like the soft poly tubing that you need. You know, it's like yeah, you can get it like in 10 foot sections. You, need 100 you know foot. too much. Yeah, you're right, man. You're right. But it is fun. I love hanging out there and and uh, just inventing things, man. Did he find something? What's that? Did he find something to use for growing at Home Depot? Oh, you could make everything. But how long after next year, I would be surprised with the election and all that. If Home Depot just opens up to having a uh, little hydropon- hydroponics section, you know? What do you mean? They already Indoor did. Garden. What are you talking about? It failed. I, yeah, Hawthorne wait. Company. Yeah. It's, yeah it's, they it's, tried to get in there. They set up They set up a section where we featured it on year? the show. Who's they that? Sold what year? Heat. That they black sold, label they sold LEDs. What They year? sold three-part nutrient. Uh, would have been... I don't know. I'm thinking 2020 ish, maybe 2019. Right. Um, and then probably only did it strategically. We saw it in Colorado. I saw it in Colorado before I moved. So that was actually 2018. But in, of course, they're doing it in a state where it's, you know, recreationally legal across the board. They're not going to go do that in prohibition land, but it didn't work. I mean, it didn't work in 2019. Gathered. It didn't work in, in 2024. That was too fast for sure. Yeah. When it's just. Man, people have been going to dispensaries. People know people that grow. Now that there's so many less grow shops, it's different. Do we want to lament? Uh, dude, I don't know if we could tell you this, but Way to Grow closed. All right. Our local Way to Grow store closed. Wow. Like where we used to do the show, for, show from. Yeah. No way. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It's just a sign of the times, oh, man. You know, it's uh, yeah, everybody know, buys way stuff. To, way to Grow is like the tight, the mighty Way to Grow. The At t- least the Fort Collins store. I'll have to ask you my between, buddy. between like your average mom and pop and Home Depot is this like shining jewel of way to grow they they're discounted but kind of like still old school they have eight dollar co2 refills well, man uh, yeah. i really might have to go get a burner now, <laughs> well, so man. you guys realize that there's literally two grow stores within or less than a half hour away. yeah and it's only two sorry only two now and they're both mom and pop kind of things. Where they're you both go in there and you hang yeah, out they're both awesome rent or, yeah very or very Mike, good yeah. crews they're super helpful. They also do a lot of like community oriented stuff. Yeah. They're not just slinging products, but they do classes. A lot of them will support their local uh, breeders. They have uh, catalogs right. out and st- and spores and stuff like that. So let them have a, another half where you could just sell re- the customer's cannabis. And then you got a yeah. perfect well, business. Man. All I'll say is that as far as the shakeout wound up happening, right? it's great that those guys, uh, are the ones that are still around. And by the way, they both support the show. I don't know if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Mike from Mountain Lion, Green Rooster, Brent over there, man. I love it. Those guys are DGC. And, and just to be fair, way to grow is still humming in Denver, Boulder and the Springs. Good. And probably up in Silverthorn. Good man. As some good people work there, man. Yeah. I would uh, be fearful myself. Uh, I'm sure it's part of the equation to be in a brick and mortar store with everything that's going online now. I mean, the trailers will be in the air soon, dropping shiz off. But I tripped out, you know, that the other day, you get same day delivery on some of this stuff on Amazon. It's mind blowing. But you still need human interaction. So to go to the grocery store and your wife's like, why are we at the grocery store for 90 minutes? I don't know. It just likes to go hang out there. I don't know. But you need human interaction. People are going to get starved for, for sure. it. Ooh. One thing I noticed about both of those places is that they do also have other plants that they grow and they they actually sell plants. And so I have numerous times been in there and people are shopping not for growing weed. Interesting. Which I, I just thought was interesting. It's not like going to a hydro shop where everything's super specialized. A lot of the organic kind of stuff now is like right. people want it for their home, right. home gardens. Wow. Dude, can I tell you? I think I'm going to out nice guy Kenny, man, all right? I'm going to talk about human, like, and human interaction. He did a phone date with a girl from the North Pole. What? No way. The North Pole. 
It doesn't make any sense. A phone date? I don't, I don't understand. Phone date, man. Is that, do you like? Do you have phone sex at the end? No, I don't think so. I, mean, I think you just kind of hang out on the phone. Like, dude, chicks are reluctant. But if it goes well, hang on. Grandma's explaining this all to me. All right, I'm in this new world, man. Yeah. Okay. I had to introduce Kenny to the the apps. Me and Kenny, yeah. are the, me and Kenny are the only single people at the bakery, so I had to introduce him. Like, man, you, you have to do the apps, and he didn't understand that you should really match with people in your city. She might move here, dude, all right? The North Pole. The North Pole. Kenny's da- dating Mrs. Claus. I was Let's like, the, put it out the actual pole or North Pole, Alaska? Uh, it's Kenny's pole. Can he put in a good word for me? I don't know. I think Kenny's more worried about the South Pole, if you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, this is the litmus test to see if Kenny listens to the show, right? No, he don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> hope not. <laughs> hope not. Oh, all right, Dad. There we go. You can take it to your to the fun the fun social media part of the show. You guys are having fun listening. As I say, comment, like, and subscribe. Help grow the show, guys. It does mean a lot. As yes. well as uh having a good time. What you what is this image? I was talking to Scotty the other day about I called it calculator laziness. I'm like, hold on, <laughs> I gotta add this up. I got six lights in my grow that I'm gotta put up, and I gotta figure out my power. And so if they're going to run at 1.5 amps each times six. Hold on. Let me get my calculator. I'm no. Like, Dude, listen to me. It was six times, times 1.5. Yes. It was 1.5 times six. That's why I busted your balls, dude. Okay. So what cream did you find here? What is this, was, this was Mercer, man. This was, uh, here you go. It says, teacher, convert this fraction to a decimal. One eighth. Me. 3.5 <laughs> grams. Teacher. Oh, dude, that's so crazy. that is true. funny as growers. We're good at like in the kitchen, uh, whether you're used to adding mills to the reses or if you're used to sell weed, you know, and all the weights. But I would, you know, taking the time and I, I don't know about you guys when when I do math quickly and I'm not sure if I'm right, I'm quicker in my head doing it quick than taking time. And sometimes I really surprise myself. But mental math. I think it's probably an exercise that just helps your brain be sharper. It's yeah. so easy. Everybody's got a calculator all the time. Here it is, your phone, right? Um, and it's a good tool, but I don't know. I'm trying to bring back mental math. Yeah, man. I don't know. Remembering stuff is not my specialty, dude. <laughs> I always struggle with that because I, I, I love Einstein. I always love everything that guy does. And he has a famous quote where he's like, I never remember anything I can write down. And that was fine in the 40s, but now that's kind of got like dubious implication, you know? Uh, dude, dude gave me a famous quote yesterday. Oh, yeah. It was a dudeism. He goes, fear causes hesitation, and hesitation causes your worst fears to come true. <laughs> I get some quotes sometimes. That sounds like a well, that's breaking any, mantra. That's not me. That is Bodie Wait. from uh, Point Break. Right? Yes. Ah, I was about okay. to ask. It's Bodie, man. Yeah, there's no context for that movie. But it is kind of deep when you think about it. Yeah, that could apply to that could apply to business. That could apply to everything. trying to date date a girl or figure something out. But uh, it does apply to quote you know sports and mountain biking and things as well. You know, man, I found uh, fifty five quotes on overcoming fear. Avoiding danger is no safer in the long run than outright exposure. The fearful have, are caught as often as the bold. And I just highlighted that one because it's Helen Keller. And I don't know what she's talking about, but you're not allowed to tell Helen Keller jokes anymore, are you? I don't think so. Man. Are you I, sure? I got a bunch of good ones, man. I don't think so. All right, fine. And to, I think it's human nature to avoid fear. But the more you think about putting yourself, I, it, it, if you're a long time listener of the show, you know, I used to say and still like to say, Man, it's good to scare yourself once a day. Get that heart going. Do something. Figure it out. Funny bear story about that the other day. Uh, as well as uh, if there's not fear, I'm sure you've had it, Scotty, in building your business, maybe. You've had moments, I'm sure you've been fearful of an outcome or a business decision or, man, is this right? But I got to go for it. If you're not having any oh, fear, yeah. you're probably not pushing. <laughs> you're, you're probably not, not pushing, pushing it. What's that? If you're not in fear, you're not living. Oh, but it's true, man. You got to the ups and downs of life are how you that's that's how you feel alive. You can't just be riding the middle all the time. You got to be down to be up. Unfortunately, that's what the adrenaline sports are all about, man. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, oh, Deep depression. I might as well drop. I'll drop quickly. The Can I drop a quick bear story? Just yesterday, just because my wife was in a little we have a little two person outdoor sauna. 
I get a phone call. I'm like, why is she calling me from the sauna? I just saw a bear oh, with the sauna, yeah. a bag of trash in his mouth. It's dark out. I'm like, okay, bear's effing with the trash. We left the garage door open for a minute. My trash is clean, but it smells the compost and it knows to grab the trash no matter what. From it, it knows if it sees a trash can, this bear's like, there's probably something in there. So I run and I get my spotlight. I get my bear mace. I got a bear banger, which is a pen you pull back and it shoots oh, off yeah. like a shotgun. And then I grabbed some bottle rockets as well. So I'm feeling confident. I go out there. I hear it in the oh, woods. It's about 25 feet from me. I'm like, oh, okay, it's in there. It's messing with the trash. All right. Because when a bear is messing with trash, you want to F with it. You want to get rid of it. You want to let it know it's not doing something good. So I try to light a bottle rocket and it's a dud. Uh, I try to light the next one. I have my spotlight on the bear. It looks up and looks over at me and its eyes are glowing because it's dark. And I kind of, in my human instincts, bear glowing eyes. I kind of panic, throw the bottle rocket. As I'm running away, drop the bear mace, which has the safety pin off of it. It goes off a little bit. This is where my wife's getting out of the sauna. I'm like, just go inside. She's like, I need to take the quick shower and starts coughing. She's like, why is it spicy out? What is happening? So it was just a big cluster of, uh, yes, dropping bear mace, doing the uh, the funny wrong thing, I suppose. But that scared me. And it's human nature to scare yourself once a day. I'm going off on the rant there. And it's a good thing to do if you can do it. Yes, it is, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting sidetracked. It's all good. I can see it loading loading up. Go ahead. You've asked me to come visit since you've moved there, and it's I got to go. What is happening? Like, the bears are just, they're all around. If I leave, you leave just, like, they just show up. They're in your neighborhood all the time. You know, there's this particular bear has been in the area since I've lived here at this house for five years. It's got a yellow tag in its ear. It's familiar with us humans. It knows what errors we make. It knows how to operate. Hibernation's around the corner, so it's especially more aggressive now. Like I said, there's nothing in my trash. It just smells that there might be something, and it's going to tear through it to see. Um, and it is uh, it is awesome to be so close to nature. Last night, I scared a coyote out of my yard. I'm going to miss it whenever I'm not here. Seeing the bears is is great. Uh, they're mostly safe, but it's, uh, yeah, they're around. Come visit. Fun. The bear will uh, kill you and the coyote will eat what the bear doesn't want. Man. The bear doesn't want to kill you. No, oh, he just will on accident. The bear is hungry. He just wants his picnic basket. He wants to move along. Come on. You guys are going to wrap this up with some, God, some best in social media. What do you got? Grandpa, did we find this guy together? How would I have found this guy? The guy that eats old food. No, keep going, man. man. Yes. Yes. Watch this. This guy eating 70-year-old canned bread versus new bread. You get that. Talking is interesting. He's a bro. How you're not worried about like botulism or something? Very acidic smell. It makes your nose want to sneeze. I don't know. It's really good, man. And I got a couple of. uh, Wait, does he get sick? That's why. No, he blows it up instead. He oh, takes a bite okay. of it and then puts a bunch of gunpowder in it and then blows it up in this weird, like, just a weird segment, man. He goes from eating it to saying, we're going to blow it up with black powder now. And, um, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty weird, huh? Wow. Yeah, it's a little bit weird, but it's... Go to the end, Grandma. Keep habit. going. Keep going to the very end. Almost to the very end, man. No, Grandma, can you see it? It's about to blow up. Oh, no, no, to the very end of the video. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah watch this. Go. Here you go. I got news for you. It's a dud. Oh, no. Watch. <laughs> Nothing happens. Well, why are we? It's why? only black powder. It's not under pressure. Like, yeah. It's, Dude, just go to the end, man. He gets. So, here you go, right there. No, go, look, yep. To the where he flushes it down the toilet. This is how it ends, man. You never made a pipe bomb, my huh, buddy. He's like, Dude, that was a good flush. And now he goes, then, by the way, that's his favorite plate. The whole time during the video, he goes, this is my favorite plate, man. I hope the plate that sweet break. bathroom sink. That's Zeeb style. Solid this state. Is, steel. This is, the, what is it? New England Animal Rescue or something? What's, what's the New, New England, England Wildlife, Wildlife and, and More? And more. Mm. YouTube is awesome. Awesome. You're awesome, Scott. <laughs> uh, and that got me down the rabbit hole. This kid, I, I think he's cool. The jury's out on this guy. Yeah, turning paint thinner Whoa. into cherry soda. Opera is still around? Oh, no. 
What is it? Holy crap. It's Look, he turned a rubber a half, glove. It's got four and a half million views in three months. He turned a rubber glove and, and uh, paint thinner. Uh, a rubber glove and I think it was acetone. Oh, you remember my buddy Beatty Beats that came up here? He's obsessed. He's a chemistry nerd. He's obsessed with this dude. Please don't say that. He's in my he's in my act where I, I, he was showing me this guy and he's like, man, he turns a pop can into aspirin. And I was like, why? And he goes, I don't know. Science? Yeah, that guy's pretty cool, man. He is. <laughs> Diamond water. So yeah, Niall Red is this fella's name and he's That's turbo hey, popular. By the way, he's got Niall Blue, which I don't know what that means. Oh. Is he bipolar is or he, something? I don't know. It's interesting. Do you use man. diamond water in your grow? Diamond? <laughs> he's got diamond water. I want to dab whatever he's got there. He though. does. And for some reason, he's still a kid. So he's obsessed with like making fart juice and stinky chemicals, man. <laughs> Is this the one you were talking about? Yeah. Made fart juice developed by the U.S. government. Yeah. The cameraman. Good day. Oh, you're reminding me of the good old stink bombs, baby. Those are still valuable. Oh, and I don't. People. Oh, yeah. Somebody mailed one to me, man, oh, just no. because of... Uh, we talked funny. about it on the show, man. They used to be a great tool. Every once in a while in high school, we'd do the triad, which would be like, okay, we got three people during lunch. Each one has a stink bomb. Lunch is in a big open area of the school. There are hundreds of people there. And we're going to go to three different spaces. And at 12.05, everybody smashes their stink bomb and watch the chaos. It's fun. <laughs> I didn't realize you were a terrorist, dude. <laughs> and then skip out to <laughs> go <laughs> rocking. Uh, this is a good time hanging, boys. Happy Saturday. Yes, if you guys all had a good time, dudegrows.com forward slash support, man. Come on over there. $10 a month pays itself in DGC dividends, all right? Comment, like, subscribe. Check out our last show if you didn't hang out. We have great grow talk during the week on the Tuesday and Thursday show going over to YouTube. And give her a go. Thanks, Banner, Scotty, Garambo on the boards. Yeah. What's up? And, man, I'm like, oh, I'm not feeling good. I'm going to go scrum it. And oh, ah. <laughs> scrum it away, dude. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> All right, dude. Take her easy.